people out from everything he ever did before into a entirely new place. Those that are willing to leave the old are moving in and they're out in no man's land. They're pressing into enemy territory that's never just been, there's been territory established where people can come and have wonderful meetings on that, on that basis. They have conquered Satan somewhat on that particular round. And they have many associates over the country that work on that realm. And when they come together, they're not, they're not pressing into new territory that Satan, that Satan hasn't been dethroned in. But if we don't press into this new territory where Satan hasn't been dethroned, we're going to lose our bodies. We can talk all we want and we're going to live forever on this lower plane that God is blessing. But it's not going to work out that way. <coughs> Satan has to be cast out of a higher plane because he still controls much of the life that's in these bodies that takes our bodies to the death realm. Hallelujah. We have to press into a plane where the body is made alive by nothing but the life of God. Oh, and in this plane that we're on, if Christ be in you, and that's the great message of the day, Christ in you. But Christ is in you, but still the body is dead because of sin. It is in Romans. If Christ be in you, the body's dead because of sin. The spirit is life. You can come together and have a spiritual meeting. You can come up in the spirit and be blessed. But you're not bringing the body out of the death realm. Therefore, this last battle is not to get God down on the plane that we're on. It's for us to come up on the plane where death will be defeated. We haven't got the message yet that will raise the dead. Because the message of the raise the dead is not in the holy place, it's in the holy of holies, where the ark is. He can't descend until he gets the people up there to descend in. And really he's not descending, he's getting the people to the place that he can ascend in. When Jesus ascended, there was two men stood in garments of white, and they said, Why stand ye gazing up to heaven? The same Jesus whom you see ascending into heaven is going to come again in like manner as he went away. 
and they were looking up for him to descend, to come out of heaven. He says, why are you standing there gazing up, trying to pull him down on the plane you're on? You're not going to pull him down on the plane you're on. He's going to send in you if you'll allow him to. And he's going to come again, not descending and meeting you on the plane you're on, but ascending and bringing you up on the plane that he's on. That's the coming of the Lord that breaks death. Is him lifting us out of this self-nature where we contend for our own way and hold for it has to go our way or it won't work and that everything has to come down on the plane of our way? No. Oh, God Almighty is going to break that and he's going to be seen coming up. Or is he seen lifting a people on up into a plane they've never ascended in before, and then he has been manifested. That's why if we're risen with Christ, we're to seek those things which are above, not the plane that Christ is, is risen, resurrected is on, because it's only the natural man that's been resurrected. And you're not to stay on the resurrection of the natural plane, but you are to seek those things which are above where Christ is, at the right hand of the Father. We get what we seek. Elementary groups of people bring elementary salvation, and they can do a wonderful job of revivals all over the world. They can attract thousands and millions of people as they minister over the radio and television, and God is with them 100%, but they don't know anything but elementary salvation. Others go further, preach the message of the further sanctification, further going on with God. God honors them on that plane, and they can only minister to the people who are willing to go on a little further than elementary salvation. But they separate a people and bring them up a little higher than God. Others, as the Holy Ghost was restored at the first part of the century, begin to minister from that plane. There was only the twos and threes that came out to begin with. And now that's a popular message. There's no persecution on it ever. The, the churches all over the world are accepting the ministers that work on that plane, giving them a right to come to their conference. And they're being accepted, accepted in this city on that particular plane. Hallelujah. And there's been the great revelation of Christ in you. But Christ in you don't bring the body out of the death realm. It's you coming into Christ. It's you coming into Christ that brings the body out of the death realm. It isn't Christ in you and the body's dead. It's you yielding your bodily life to Christ that he's blessing and pouring your spirit out until you come out of that realm and come out of the flesh into Christ. Because this descent is in a ministry and Jesus Christ can't descend until he gets the people out of the church realm completely. Getting the people past the revelation of Christ within and just come together and get a blessing on that plane. We're not interested in coming together to get the flesh blessed. We're not interested in coming together to just, to just get Christ down with no deliverance from death. We're interested in the message that God is already beginning to bring. It's going forth and being accepted all over the land and separating people until they're not rejoicing in the fact that Christ is in them and coming to just have meetings and glorify themselves because Christ is in them. That don't save the body from death. They begin to get concerned that this life that's in the body will become subjected to the Christ life until this life that's in the body becomes one with Him. And they're no more twain, but they're one. One life controls them. Not the flesh being blessed, not the flesh being anointed, but the flesh being destroyed till there's just one life coming forth. That's the river of life, clear as crystal, coming right out of the throne of God, and that's what's going to bring life to the body and nothing else. 
Therefore, God's calling the people to forsake everything else and give themselves to not function on the old. They don't care how dead their meetings are. They're not going to try to make them alive by a fleshly activity. They're just going to stay there and die. Until and when we die to the realm we're on that brings death to the body, then Christ is going to be for the body. Christ is in you now, but he's not for the body because you hold the body in the death realm. You get Christ to bless the body in the death realm, and he'll bless the body in the death realm, but that don't keep it from dying. You can talk in tongues like five minutes before you die and talk in tongues while you're dying, but that don't keep you from dying. The spirit in you don't keep you from dying. You get up in the spirit realm where there isn't any death. The spirit in you is God meeting you on the death realm. Now God's calling us out of the death realm into the life realm. This message of life means more than it's ever been preached before. It has not solved the problem by men that are preaching it. And when this message takes the faith, there's going to be no funerals amongst that people. Jesus never stopped for a funeral to bless the people at the side of the grave. He brought them out of the death realm. We're not after the blessings on the flesh. We're after to learn how to die to that plane and love not our lives unto death. We might be caught up to God where Satan will be cast out and have no place in that people. And they can go forth, hallelujah, with a word that brings God to people and put Satan, kick Satan out completely. And delivers them completely and brings them over into the God realm and into the life realm where we don't throw together on an old fellowship, we throw together on an entirely new life fellowship in the kingdom of God. Settle down upon us, Lord. There's a word that many begins to go for. It begins to bring a sobriety, and it begins to settle a government down over the people as we learn how to yield to this word. And as we yield to it, and I preach this word it's going to break everything that's in me. And it's not only going to break everything that's in me if I allow it. If I preach a word that will break everything that's in me and I give myself to the breaking up of the Westlake life and give myself up to the destruction of the old order and I dare to receive a word and dare to speak a word that will destroy that man of sin in me, it's going to bring deliverance to those that I preach to. But unless I become a husband of this, let this thing be worked out in my life, and so it isn't God blessing sin. It isn't God blessing corruption. It isn't God blessing death. It's God delivering entirely from that realm, bringing us into a complete new order. It's going to take a separation unto God such as we've never known in order to be ministers of this Melchizedek order and begin to minister a life that can never die. I'm not interested in ministering that which blesses the death realm. I'm not interested in ministering that which holds people together on the death realm. I'm interested in ministering that which begins to bring us up out of this realm of death, heartbreak and sorrow, and bring us into a new relationship with God where the peace of his kingdom begins to flow as a river. And that only throws, that don't throw, and our disobedience, the river flows from the throne of God as God rules over our lives supreme. The river don't, the rain comes on the flesh. The Spirit's poured out on the flesh. It blesses the flesh until God can get us to see that we have to leave that plane completely and turn ourselves over to a new realm in God and pray night and day and give ourselves and put ourselves on the altar until God sets his throne up in our lives. And then when he rules supreme in our lives, there comes a river of life, clear as crystal. And the river of life is never going to come by the Spirit being poured out and getting an outer blessing. That'll bless the death realm, but it won't stop the death realm. The river of life is going to flow out where God's on the throne and so controls us that nothing but his life flows from us.
That's going to bring us together in one. That's going to give us a fellowship such as we never had before. The early church never knew it because they didn't come into this place. Our dear brother read this morning the conflict between the church at Jerusalem and Paul setting up his order. Because they were trying to do it in the flesh through natural circumcision, through cutting away in the natural. Paul was doing away with that and saying circumcision is not of the flesh. It isn't cutting the old life back a little. It's cutting way down in the heart, cutting the old nature, deliver us from the nature that brings death. It's already beginning to come away. But if people dare to yield to it and give themselves for it, they're going to be delivered completely from the death realm. They're going to find themselves coming in, not the Holy Ghost message, but the Son speaking through them. The anointed message can't do this. The Holy Ghost poured on the flesh can't do this because the Holy Ghost then is not the element. The Holy Ghost comes to teach us how to yield to Christ and how to give ourselves to Christ to where Christ can make us free because the Holy Ghost blesses the flesh it don't deliver from the flesh. It's poor, the Spirit is poured out on the flesh but it don't deliver us from the flesh nature. But as we let the nature of the Christ ruling us and give place to the nature of the Christ to take over whom the Son sets free is free indeed even free from death. The Holy Ghost anointing the flesh doesn't free anybody from death. It's the Christ that destroys the flesh nature because in Adam we die and Christ we're made alive. And you're not made alive by the old flesh being anointed. Christ the first fruits that are made alive. Afterwards those that are his at his coming. The Holy Ghost is the coming of the Christ. whom the Son makes free is free indeed. We can look for freedom everywhere we want it, but we'll only find it one place. Yielding to the Christ as though we've been raised from the dead. Not try to make this thing work on the death plane and on the dying plane, but being raised out of the death plane and yielding ourselves to God to be lifted out of death rather than pull Christ down to bless the death plane. That's the difference between the two thousand years that Christ has walked in his church. He's been in his people, but he couldn't lead them out of the flesh into the Melchizedek order because it wasn't time for it to come. And now that the end of the two days is fast approaching, and we're probably in an overlap between the two days as the people that are moving out of knowing him after the flesh and getting the flesh blessed until they know him and slaying the flesh. And our meetings are changing the order in which we no more come together to get the flesh blessed. We come together crying out for a word that will slay that flesh completely and giving ourselves to the purpose of God. And as people unite on the old order, get a blessing on the old order. As the people that's beginning to unite on the new order, they don't come together to have the flesh blessed, they come together to stand with one another to see the flesh destroyed completely. Because flesh can't enter into this next round. Flesh and blood cannot enter into this kingdom that I'm talking about. The Holy Ghost kingdom gathers all kinds, good and bad, and gathers men unawares that keep in, that serve nothing but the flesh. They'll come and take the things of God and they won't use them to come up higher in God. They use them to build up the flesh. They'll sit at the table with God's people. They'll get every word that they can get. They'll get every move of the spirit they can get. They don't want to die to the flesh, but they want to use that spirit to keep the flesh alive. They crept into the early church unawares and they baptized them and put them in there and gave them a place to the destruction of the early church. It took the early church out of God down into the dark ages. Now she's coming back. And there's going to come a word if it hasn't already begun to come. It's going to pluck out of his kingdom everything that offends him. Not offending one another, but anything that offends him. 
Thou art offense unto me, Peter, get behind me. Because you say we're not the things of God, but the things of man. You're a great apostle, and I'm going to use you. But get behind me. Don't stand in front of me to keep me from going to Jerusalem and try to save my own life. I'm going up to Jerusalem to lay down my life. And you get behind me. Don't try to save, help me to save my life because I'm not trying to save it. Get out of the way. Let me go up to where God is calling me to lay my life down completely. Because if I don't lay my life down and set up a standard, many sons can't be conformed to the image of the of the one son. But if I set up the standard, and God works out the standard in me, it has the same kind of body that can be tempted like every other body is tempted. And I refuse to be tempted, refuse to be drawn aside. And I conquer Satan. I become the channel for a new order to come through. And the Holy Ghost is not that order. And the Holy Ghost takes the things of the new order and teaches us how to enter into it. He's gone away into the unseen, the invisible world. And the Holy Ghost has been sent here. Hallelujah. Yet a little while you won't see me. And again a little while you'll see me because I go to the Father. And that means when we see him, we won't see our bodies being controlled by the old life. We'll see our bodies being controlled by the new life, the new life of God. When we enter into the realm that he's in, and he's coming, coming up as it were. And behold, the bridegroom cometh, and the people are going out to meet him. Hallelujah. And the way they're going out to meet him, they're conquering that flesh life and leaving it behind until nothing but the pure one life of God. There's not a people in the land today, there's not a group over the country that nothing but the pure life of God flows through. So therefore we have a right to cease that and the door is still open. And when the door is full of what he wants to open up, He's going to rise and close the door. Then the other guys have prophesied about it and said they had it. And the others that made so much noise and say they've arrived and they're trying to go out over the country now and establish the new order. They're not establishing a new order. They haven't got their bodies out of death yet. This new order, there's no death in it. It's the order of Melchizedek. It's the power of a life that can't die being worked out in the body. To stop short of that, We'll just, shot, we'll just get our reward on a lower level. I don't say it won't be a good reward, but I've turned that, that reward completely. I wouldn't go across the street to get one speck of it or to help to try to establish it in any way, shape, or form. As God Almighty has made me to know the transition period is on. And as long as the door is open, once that door is open, the door is closed. And there'll be no one else in coming to that ministry again. The others just come and drink of it. They get the benefits of it, but they're not the ones that it come through. The others will have to give up everything else that they thought was going to save them, they thought was going to bring them in, and everything has been blessed and God in the Lord order, and they'll finally have to come and drink. But they can't be the channels that are flowing through because they didn't pay the price, and the door's been closed. The predestined companies the life is flowing. And you can identify that company when you're, when you're finding to be a company that's working in perfect harmony. There's no pulling and holding amongst them in any way, shape, or form. They've realized that this life has to be overcome. And this body, this body's not dead, it's alive, but this life is trespasses. The body's dead because Christ is not going to We just get a little physical touches. Christ is not dwelling in our body. He's dwelling in our spirit. He quickens our moral body by his spirit that dwells within us and gives us little quickenings to encourage us to leave that flesh realm completely and turn away from it and let the Christ keep quickening our bodies until finally he moves into the body, moves out of the inner man into the body, and the body can't go to the grave because Christ controls the body. And it's no more dead in trespasses and sin. It's alive and nothing but God. That's the order. That's the transition. That's what God's calling the people to seek. And stay on their face before God. Knowing that the time is here. And as they wait on God, they're not waiting on God to pull him down. They simply know by the fulfillment of scriptures. We have a right to look up because our redemption draws nigh.
And we'll never redeem our bodies by pulling God down on the plane we're on. We'll redeem our bodies by looking up and God lifting our bodies out of this death realm up into the plane that he's on. We can have God on this plane or we can leave this plane and find God on a new plane. But you can't take the old with you. The man and child dies for all natural understanding. The woman told to the son, that's all the church has had is natural understanding. God's worked through our five senses. He's poured the Spirit out on our five senses. But those five senses that we feel through our bodies, the eyes, the feelings, it's all in the body. And he works and meets us on the plane, visits us on the plane of our five senses. But we're getting oil in our vessels now that's going to take us out of the plane of the five senses. And the five virgins that work in the five senses are going to stay in that plane. And even though they get the oil on that plane, they can't get into the higher plane. That's all they know is that this thing has worked out in the vessel. It's worked out to where God is living in their bodies that move on in. We're paying a price to get this message. Men can laugh at us all they want to because we're daring to seek on out beyond. Hallelujah. Lord, hear thee in the day of trouble. There's only one way for God to hear me in the day of trouble. Oh, he can deliver me and give me a temporal deliverance. He can deliver me and bless me on the flesh. Let me have the way to sing and right in the end thereof is the ways of death. He can bless me on that plane. But I don't want to be blessed on the plane of my natural. I don't want to be blessed on the plane of my physical. I don't want to go to a meeting just to get a natural blessing and feel a little quickening in the flesh. And the minute I leave the meeting, that meeting's gone and I'm back down in the flesh and get a temporary quickening. I want to come in until that flesh is made alive and nothing but the life of God. In order for that flesh to be made alive, I have to die to one plane as Jesus died. After he never even sinned once, he still had to die. Made of a woman, made under the law. He had to die to everything that woman gave him. Because she was the instigator of pulling Adam out of the high plane. She was the first to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And first to yield. And then begin to woo and to draw. Man's always attracted by a woman. The drawn. The greatest drawing outside of God. It's a, it's a sex drawing. Men will die for it. Live for it. Satisfied with it. Won't try to rise and come into a higher plane. Lord, hear thee in the day of trouble. I don't want to be here and get just a temporary deliverance. I want to be delivered out of the thing that's troubling me. I don't want the Lord to hear me in the day of trouble and just pour his spirit out and bless me and me going on in that low plane. I want to be delivered out of that trouble. Hallelujah. And I have to be willing to be delivered. Like we got a letter last week down in Texas, Beaumont, Texas. Weeping over the tapes, crying at what they're receiving from the tapes. Not many people, Brother Westlake, are listening to what you're saying. Which is those that are listening are receiving something. Because we're not preaching ourselves and we're not preaching to, we're not preaching to come into a meeting and get the Holy Ghost to bless our flesh. We'd rather sit in a meeting and die. So that flesh dies completely and we can be lifted out of it into a complete new plane of God. And it only comes through death. Jesus had to die to come into it. The man child loves not their lives under death. That means you don't hold God to the death plane. You release God from the death plane and let him ascend in you. And as you ascend, he's seen coming as he went away ascending through a people. That's the way the Lord's going to come. He's not going to come descending to our plane. He's going to come lifting the people up to the plane that he's in in the unseen world. And they bring it to fact that people see it like the visible plane being worked out in them and begin to flow from them. That's the call of God. That's the message of his people. People don't want it. They have a right to turn away from it. Get God on the lower plane. 
But I say it'll never. We just kid ourselves. I don't say that many in those planes won't die and save their bodies, but they won't save their bodies on the plane they're on. They'll save their bodies by taking them out of that plane and holding up another standard to where people begin to seek God, begin to realize there's something more than what we have. And so we don't come together to present what we have. We come together to get what God wants us to get. We're through trying to establish works over the country. Go, but we don't care whether they ever go out again to try to establish anything we've ever done in days gone by. Because as we said Thursday night, God's bringing an end to that order. And we want it to quickly be destroyed, quickly pay the price, quickly get out of the way that he might come in a new order. And it's only ourselves that's hindered him from coming forth. My flesh, your flesh, the flesh that's in the sons that think they've arrived is what's hindering this new thing to come to pass. They're satisfied with the order of their own. We're not. We're seeking the things which are above. We'll never be satisfied till we awaken his likeness. We'll never let him go. We'll wrestle with him as Jacob of old. Until, he, until as a prince we prevail with God and our na names are changed from Jacob, the subtle one, to Israel, the prince that has prevailed with God. There's a battle on! This battle is between the flesh and the spirit. Whether we go into the fleshly fellowship, blessed on the fleshly fellowship, whether we're living to leave all fleshly fellowships, I want to tell you there's a fellowship so far above it. I've had tastes of it. I know what it is. If I hadn't had tastes of it, I wouldn't know where I was going. But I've had enough tastes of it that I know what I'm moving on into. Hallelujah. Lord, hear thee in the day of trouble. The name or the nature. Now the nature of the God... It's not going to bring my nature into the deliverance that his nature's in. That's what we try to do. We try to associate our nature with the new nature of God and God's blessedness in it. But it don't bring us in. Not the Melchizedek order. There's nobody living the Melchizedek order in this earth right now. It lies ahead. The thousand years hasn't fully begun yet. But at the beginning of it, there's going to, Satan is going to be bound until he can't touch a people. You show me a people anywhere over the land that Satan can't get in and touch and work this hard and harm him. I'll go and sit to the feet of that people until they bring me in because they've got what I'm looking for. And until you show me a people that have got that, I'm turning myself unto God and seeking him with all my heart and all my might because if they haven't got it, they can't bring me in. They're not husband of it. The husband has to be a partaker of it. We don't claim to be husband. We've left the old completely. We've turned our backs on it completely. We will not be associated with it because we're settled ourselves, not that we have anything against. God bless them on that plane. Give them what they want. Let them have what they want. We can't be satisfied with it. We're moving on into a higher plane than God. And we're willing to pay that price of suffering and ever being misunderstood and suffering and everything else in order to cross over and come to this new place in God. This thing won't stir the flesh and have the flesh run all over the place, but there's a sober air to set it right down now. If you've got any spirit of God, you can feel the sober to set it down. Because God, this wine sobers us. That wine makes us drunk. Be careful lest at any time you're overcharged with drunkenness and surfacing. That's drunkenness on the things of God. Pouring them out on the flesh and just getting the surface, not going down until it changes our very nature. Brings us into the very nature of the Christ. I'd rather be with the people that are going to be than to be with the people that just want the old nature to be blessed. There's the line of demarcation that God himself is drawing. I've been four months coming into what little I have, and I'm not stopping yet until I get completely over. I'm not asking anybody to do what I'm doing or the way that God's leading me, but I do tell you to keep your hands off of me. And let me find God on the way that I'm seeking to find Him. Because I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it to be amongst a little group of forerunners that's already left the established. Already left that which is God has blessed me. Already left that which has been established. And I'm moving out into territory 
that hasn't been established yet that a kingdom of life can come. And they'll have water to counteract the water that's flowing out of Satan's mouth. They'll have water to counteract that and bring the clear channel of nothing but the pure life of God. The name or the nature worked out in me. God's not going to give his nature to another. God's not going to give the glory of his nature. He'll give the glory of the Holy Ghost around the people. And we can look out over the land and see what people have done with it. How they've used it to fight one another. How they've used it to build kingdoms. How they use it to set themselves up. Setting certain standards and certain orders. Many times overlooking sin and corruption right in the midst of the order that they're trying to set up. They don't deal with it at all, but just over, just covered as it were. Try to go on in the further unfoldment of it. God's bringing all of that to an end in a people that are willing to pay the price. And they've got help for those that want help, that really want help, and really want to be delivered from their own nature. They'll stay with them. They won't stay with them to bless the old and get them on and down and make them preachers on the old. They'll stay with them to get them out of the old and they might come to this new Melchizedek order of God. They'll help them through this transition that others are not qualified to help. They haven't paid the price. They haven't turned to God sufficiently to begin to get the word. It's going to cost us I was going to say something is going to cost us more than something. It's going to cost us everything. The song Miriam just got, I want your everything. Hallelujah. Now we'll try to move quickly. I've got a lot of scripture on my mind here. The name or the nature. And he will not give his glory or the glory of that nature to another. He's not going to give me his nature for me to take his nature out and, and wallow in the dust. He gave that nature the nature of Jesus because Jesus wouldn't take it and wallow it down in the dust. He'd only work as he saw the Father work. He wouldn't pull that nature down and, and connect it with his old and take it out in the old. He kept it clean. He kept it separate. He's not going to give his nature to another, but he's going to work it out in us. So he's not going to give me his nature. His nature is going to become my nature. Because I'm willing to pay the price of letting my nature go. Not contending in that holding for it. Not trying to get it blessed anymore. Not contending for it to get its way anymore. Wow. Die, Westlake, die. Learn how to die. It's more important to learn how to die now than to try to learn how to live on the old order. Because we learn how to die to the, that old order, we're going to begin to learn how to live in the new. We'll have to learn how to die to the old, come out of the old in order to come over to the new. There is no other way. The name, the nature. All right, he won't give me. He won't give me his nature. If I get his nature, I have to die. The body's dead because of sin. I have to die to that sin. I have to lay off every weight in the sin. I have to have faith in Jesus and in the life of Jesus. Not just the body that he was in, but the life that was in that body that took that body up where it is. I have to have faith in that life if I'm yield to it. And if I look to him. That life will give me strength to lay off the old life completely and lay off every weight that holds me down to the death and the earth round. He gives me strength to lay them off. I have to lay it off. There's things we do. I've set before you an open door, but you have to go in that door. And see, you can't take one single thing in, you can't get in, only as you leave everything else. See, and I've set an open door out of the cell of nature. Out of the old into the new, you can't take the old in. You can only go through as you leave the old. But I've set an open door, and if you look to me, I'll give you power to lay off the waste. I'll lay you power. I'll give you power to run this way, looking unto me, and not depending on yourself in any way, shape, or form, but depending on nothing but me. You don't go into a meeting trying to bring God down on the plane that he worked on yesterday. You don't go into a meeting to try to order and get people together on the order that we've known in days gone by, we come together complete empty for his life to take over and give us power to lay that old life down. It brings us nothing but heartbreak and sorrow anyway. Only a temporary peace, only a temporary joy. 
In order for there to be permanent peace, the government has to be on his shoulder. And of the increase of his kingdom and peace, there shall be no end. Who's in an end of a, that there's nothing but peace increasing? Who's in a place of all the ministers in the land and they find me one? I'll go and sit at their feet until they get me over to what they have because that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm waiting for. And seeing I can't find it in man, I have to turn away from man. And seek God with all my heart and all my soul. Seeing man hasn't got it. And they're more interested in setting up what they've been established in, which has been abroad. But they can't be established in the next till they leave that which they've been established in. Because there's too much flesh working in that which has been established. Send the help from the sanctuary. That's the Holy of Holies. You can get spanked from the candlestick realm. Get spanked from the golden realm. You can get spanked from the table of shoe bread realm. But that's only knowing Christ after the flesh. The veil is going through the veil. That is to say, His flesh. That's where you don't know Him anymore after a fleshly consciousness. Because God's on the throne and the former things pass away. Never come to your mind or consciousness again. You're conscious only of a complete new order. Send the help from the sanctuary, the holiest of holies, where the ark is. Where he dwells between the cherubims. On a plane that he hasn't dwelt on in any other piece of furniture. In the plan of God from the gate. Clear on down to the candlestick and the golden altar. He's on beyond. Anything this side knows him after the flesh. We have to go through the veil, that is to say his flesh, to know him after the fatherhood. And he's coming in the glory of the Father and all the holy angels with him and establishing a new order and a new plane. Send thee help from the sanctuary. Strengthen thee out of Zion. We've come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God. And before God gets through, there's going to be 144,000. Before this ministry stops working, they're not only going to lose themselves, but they're going to get 144,000 and teach them how to be redeemed from among men and follow the Lamb with us wherever he goes. And he's the first fruit son to go out of the death realm. They have no mark of the beast. There's no natural mark. There's nothing but the name of the Father written in their foreheads. They're not following the ministry. You can't get this by following a ministry. You can only get it by following God alone. You might follow the example of somebody that's moving in it, but you can't get it by following the example. You have to get it by dying and let God take over alone in your life. Others can't lead out and you follow them. This only comes as you're gathered your children one by one. You children of Israel, you're gathered one by one. You're loose, brought directly unto God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Strengthen the out of Zion. We're coming to Mount Zion. And out of Mount Zion is going to come a word that's going to shake everything that can be shaken and everything that man puts into his own, that he wants to live his own life and yet God the blessed is going to be shaken out of it. Shake out of his kingdom everything that man has ever made. Any natural thing that God has ever blessed, every natural thing that God's ever poured his spirit out is going to be shaken out of his kingdom. And we're going to be, a, we're going to receive a kingdom that's no natural in it, and because no natural in it, it can't be moved. We receive a kingdom that can't be shaken, it can't be moved, because there's no natural operation in it at all. That's what it means to move out of the candlestick realm into the ark realm. That's what it means to go through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Come to this Melchizedek in the next order. It's exactly what it means. Hallelujah. I don't know anybody that's preaching this. I know I've paid a price to get it. Hallelujah, it cost me something. It cost me something every day. I still was so silly.
Infantry was so strong against them, they couldn't make any more. And they really wanted help to reach down on them and help them on up into the pure white nature of God. <laughs> Remember thy offerings. How much you're offering? You just offer a little meal offering, a little turtle dove? Or you're bringing a whole burnt offering? Putting a whole self. And you're taking it out, you're not asking for fire, you're not asking for rain that'll bless the flesh. You're not sodding the sacrifice with water. You're putting it on the altar that the Elijah company is building today that's fallen down. It's not in the land anymore. This altar of fire that I'm talking about and what it means to put ourselves on the altar and the fire from heaven without any man-made fire or any man-made anointing or God using man in any way. You put no fire under this. The fire comes from God. And it's only the fire of God's nature that can burn up. It's only our God a consuming fire. Hallelujah. But he's only burning up those that their bodies are on the altar and they're seeking for it to be burned up. They're not trying to contend for it. They're not trying to hold it. They're not trying to make it work. They're willing to die completely and give themselves to God. That's the ministry God's calling this assembly in. This was founded for 50 years ago. This is what we're, that's why we're not popular. We could be popular too. Just go around and get a blessing on God's people. Get their flesh blessed. I'll never settle for that. I want to see them delivered from death. I want to see this last ties of Satan that holds God's people to the death realm broken until death is not working in that people even in their bodies. They're not just getting little quickenings, but the life of God takes over completely. It took over in Jesus' body completely. That's why Jesus saved his body. He didn't resurrect his body on the plane that he lived on. He took it into a complete new realm. The glory of the Father. Woo! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, yes, Lord. Sure, Lord. Take us dwelling. Cheap at any price. Dirt cheap. Bargain. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Burnt. Accept the sacrifice that's been burnt up. Put yourself on the altar for the old life to be burnt up. For that flesh life to go, the Adamic life to go, and Adam you die. It's only him coming in and taking the place of Adam that can make you alive. You're not going to make Adam alive. He's going to annihilate him. So that nature that drove you and that nature that pulled you and that nature you couldn't get the victory over, you're delivered from it completely and nothing but the nature of God that's, that's overcome all that other nature begins to live in you and all of its freedom, all of what it is. Oh, God, give us a vision, an understanding of what you're endeavoring to bring us into. It won't be a squabble amongst us and a pulling and hauling Say we're going to bring it some other way. We'll come united that we all have to lay down our lives completely and let this old life be burnt up completely because he's not going to give beauty until we become ashes. Beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The oil of joy for the spirit of mourning that they might be trees of righteousness out of the ashes of the old. Trees of righteousness. Not the old being blessed, but leaving the old completely that the Lord has planted we want the glory. We want to be the big preachers. We want to be the head. We want to get the people to come under us, as it were, and under what God has blessed us with. No, we're not after that. We're after that all to be burnt up. We might come into a complete new relationship in God. People all over the land are getting down in their hearts and they're responding with telephone calls and letters from all over the land. We're trying to be very careful and sending the tapes out because we're not just after a tape ministry. We only want to reach the ones. We don't want to stir up hell out there. Send it out and get them all stirred out and working against them. We want them to receive so we might begin to blend together and not be fighting one another. We begin to blend together in the sweet harmony of what God is already beginning to do. Hallelujah. The stir is on because we don't all want to go God's way. We think we can bring this thing on the ways that God has blessed us in days gone by. 
and we don't want to pay the full price. Others are not going to pay the price, and all they can do is come and drink. Get that which is coming from it. And even use it on the plane that they're on. Come freely and drink of the waters of life. But they'll soon see when they drink of the waters of life and then go back and drink of their own system, they'll soon see the difference. But they'll only want to drink of nothing but the waters of life. But they have a chance to come and begin to drink of this order, then go back and drink of the old. And when they're in the new, they're being blessed, and when they're in the new, they're under the curse. And so they know that everything they drink from the old brings a curse, and as they drink only from the new, it's nothing but life. But they can come and drink of the new. Who said will? The bride says, come. The spirit says, come. You don't have to repent. Come and drink of the new. Then go back and drink of the old and begin to see the difference until you forsake the old and come over and drink of nothing but the new. But still, you're not channeled. You just have to get it by drinking from the channels that paid the price for it to come through. There's a price to pay. Hallelujah. God called me as a boy to give myself to this channel. I never even understood what he was calling me to give myself to. I'm just beginning to understand what the call is all about. Where I'm willing to further give myself to him from everything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen the outer Zion. Zion is the realm where he rules. Zion hasn't been redeemed yet. Zion is the first realm to be redeemed. And Zion is being redeemed with judgment right now. He's taking away all of our ten. And he's redeeming the Zion realm unto himself. And he's going to purge this ministry. As they begin to meet, he's going to purge the daughters of Zion that are in every assembly from the filthiness of the flesh. And when he's purged the daughters of Zion, then he's going to put a visible canopy over those assemblies. And the glory of the Lord is going to be visible as they come together. They're not going to see that God's good. They're going to so speak in God that the glory of God will witness. And the glory of God, not healings, not resurrection, not death of the Holy Spirit, but the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon thee. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Help me to turn from everything. Why, to be anything all but the glory of God might be seen, and people might want to see the difference between the glory of one round, the church round, and the glory of the kingdom round. Hallelujah. See what it is for men to yield their lives to where nothing but God is ruling over them and the pure life of God is falling from them and they can come and come under that rule and they can go back and drink of the old sad nature they can come and drink of the water that's coming boy, when they drink of the waters that's coming then go drink of the other when they drink of the waters that's coming they begin to be free when they go back and drink of the old they're bonded to the old again and they learn not to go back to the old but just drink of that which is coming the river of God that makes glad the city of, the streams thereof make glad the city of our God Oh, I feel you mightily upon me, Lord. I ask you to break through this old Westlake flesh. Get it out of the way, no matter what it costs. I know it's not completely out of the way yet, but don't spare me, Lord. I've suffered the last four months as I've never suffered in my life before. But still don't spare me, Lord. Because if you take your spirit off of me, I'd be dead in a month. My only hope is to go on with you. Remember all of thine offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Grant thee according to thine own heart. And fulfill all of thy counsel. He'll give me what my own heart wants. He'll give you what your heart wants. But God help my heart to want nothing but what's in the heart of God for me. Help me not to demand anything for myself. But my heart will seek your heart. That my heart might be joined with your heart. That my nature might be... Be liberated and joined into your pure nature. Hallelujah. We will rejoice in thy salvation. I'm not talking about the salvation that the church has known. I'm not talking about the salvation the sons have come into now and are trying to propagate all over the land. I'm talking about a salvation that delivers us completely from the self-life until God has assemblies that everyone is really part of that assembly. Not that others won't come in and sit in the assembly, but everyone is part of that assembly is one, even as he is the Father is one. I'm pressing on toward the mark of the high calling, the prize of the mark of the high calling that's in Jesus, and I don't have to stop. My body can go to the grave, but if I'm pressing on it, when my body goes to the grave, I'll be resurrected in it. If it comes while I'm in this life, I'll enter in. And the ones that never stopped, they died in Christ. They didn't die out of Christ. They didn't die in the human nature. They died striving in Christ. 
And they're the ones that's going to be resurrected and come forth with this little remnant down here that's going to rule and reign. We're not the only ones that's going to rule and reign as a remnant in the unseen world that's already made it. It already has their bodies, if you please. White robes have been given to every one of them. And as we connected with them without losing our body, by being connected with them without losing our body, we save our body and come forth together. That's not the bride, that's the highest company. That's not the first fruits, that's the first fruits of the first fruits. That's what John was caught up to when he's caught up out of the church realm and was caught up and saw the throne, and saw him that sat on the throne and saw the ministry that was coming from the throne. Now we're down in the 11th chapter of Revelation. The, the two witnesses have risen again. The church has been restored. Everything the other church had has been restored. Not everything that Jesus did, but everything the other church did has been restored. Hallelujah. And the voice has come up hither. Leave that. And come on. That the trumpet might sound of the kings of this world. Or the world of my body that's dead now become the kingdoms of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We rejoice in thy salvation. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about elementary salvation. I'm not talking about sonship salvation. I'm talking about the, mel the salvation that we begin to minister after the order of an endless life because it's been worked out in our bodies and our bodies can't die and we can't, we can't minister after the order of an endless life as long as death is working in our bodies. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of the nature, in the name of the nature. Westlake, leave your nature and take on the nature of Christ. Don't rejoice in your nature because God blesses your nature. Leave your nature. We will rejoice in thy salvation. What is that, sir? In the name of our God. I rejoice in the nature of my God that's being worked out in me. I mean, I'm rejoicing in the nature of God that's breaking the force of my nature to hold me down to the death run. I'm rejoicing in the salvation of the last days that takes my salvation out of the death realm and begins to put it where life flows. And even people are saying on the tapes now, Brother Westlake, they're saying the same thing all over the country, but there's no life in it. What you're saying, we feel life. Because a little of it has been worked out in me. Not all of it, but a little of it. But I'll never stop until it's completely worked out. I'll never settle. I'll never compromise for a fellowship until the fellowship comes on the pure plane of nothing but the life of God. We rejoice in thy, in thy salvation. That's not our salvation. That's His complete salvation. It brings us under inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, waiting to be manifested in the last day. In the name of our God will we set up our banners. Been too many banners set up in the nature of Westlake, unintentionally desiring to set them up in nothing but the nature of God, but find that old nature. Satan's able to get in and get that old nature stirred up and get to work again. And we're turning away from setting up our banners in any way under the standards of the old nature, but we're setting up our banners under the standard of what God's nature is. In the name of the nature of our God will we set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all of thy petitions as we set up our banners in nothing but the nature of God. Now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. See, there's a difference between anointed and salvation. People think because they're anointed, they're saved. People think because God's anointed their flesh, they're saved. People think because God has blessed their flesh and anointed their, their flesh will never die. No, that's not so. The anointed yet has to be saved. Jesus was anointed. So when he went through the death, he was saved. He threw death, destroyed him that had power of death, which is the devil. It wasn't the death on the cross that destroyed Jesus, that destroyed Satan. It was the death he died in the garden. If it's possible this cup to pass from me, let it go. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That was the last battle. An awful battle between the flesh and the spirit. If it's possible, let the cup. Nevertheless, not thy will, but thine be done. That was the full death. 
That was putting that last rise of that human nature to bring the kingdom of God on a lower plane. And he could have brought it on that plane, and then he and all of us would have had two natures to live without, without eternity. We could have overcome the old nature, live above it, but it would always be there, trying to get its way. But when he died to that nature, and that life went out of that body, having overcome the nature of the flesh completely, when that body left, when that life left the body, there's nothing but the pure nature of God went down into hell. And Satan and all of his imps couldn't hold that body because the life that was in the body overcame Satan. That's why he took on as the children were to take us of flesh and blood. He put, took of the same that through death, death to the nature that Adam had, death to the vanity that man was created with, death to the vanity made of a woman made of the law, the body made of the same vanity. And overcame it completely and became sin. As he took our nature and our sins, never sinned once, but took them into his body and overcame them. And because he overcame them in his body, I can receive the overcoming life, the life that's already overcome. I can learn how to draw from it until I'm complete in him. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelleth in him, and I am complete in him if I draw from nothing but him. If I draw from anything outside of him, that which I draw outside of him is my destruction. That which I draw from nothing but him is nothing but the completeness of God, because nothing but the completeness of God works in that body that's tempted the same as my body. And he overcame every temptation that I ever have to go through. And he's a merciful high priest that I can come to at every time of need and not go down, hallelujah, under the power of my own nature and not be overcome by the power of anything else. But because he overcame that, he can minister his life to me and priest. I can come to him as a high priest and stay at his feet until he ministers life to me until I overcome as he overcame. And if I overcome as he overcome, I'm going to have a special place amongst the people of God. I'm going to reign with him. If I don't overcome as he overcome, I'm going to be ruled over and can always be ruled over at least until the time the king is turned back to the Father and God becomes all in all. But if I can overcome now, I'm going to have a special privilege of having the life of God so strong, it will eventually break the nations, break the nations with a rod of iron and rule over them, and bring them into submission to God. That's part of our redemption. Uh, reconciliation means more than the silly way that we've taught it. the people are going to pay a price. They're not just going to say it with their lips. The life flowing from them is going to reconcile the life flowing from them is going to be so strong it will counteract everything that's in anybody else. When they want to be delivered. So they're going to have to call on the name of the Lord. You go to hell, you stay there until you call for your knee bows. And you, and you don't depend on yourself anymore because it was a rebellion that took you there. And you stay there until the knee bows and you turn away from that rebellion. And when the knee bows to the glory of God, then you come out of hell or hate you to come out of it on the lake of fire and coming in. And there's going to be a people that's so loose they go right down and won't be hurt by that second death of hell's power, have no force of they go right down and minister and teach people how to yield to the law. That's the coming ministry. Teach people how to leave the old, not be blessed in the old, but to be loose in the old completely and come on over. Be partakers, come under this priesthood that's going to rule and reign with him a thousand years. Uh, it means something means casting all of our crowns at his feet. means everything that God ever gave us, that God ever, ever God, every way that God ever used us in days gone by. Has to be, that's the crown authority that he gave us. And we have authority over certain forces, had crowns and authority. We have to cast it at his feet. If we're going to be ruled, we're going to reign and rule with him because it's nothing but his life that rules through us. Hallelujah. The process of going through is on now. People are paying the price, willingly, rejoicing that they're having an opportunity to hear the word that will give them an opportunity to turn to God. Open the eyes of understanding that like Mary of old, they might give themselves to God without knowing any man or no human relationship in any way, shape, or form that they might bring forth the Christ and make him visible to be seen in these last days in a corporate body of sons going to lose the creation and the bondage of, of corruption bringing in the liberation. They have to be liberated themselves 
by the liberating life of God that frees them from every yoke and every bondage in order to be the liberators and the saviors that's going to stand on Mount Zion and judge the Mount of Esau and turn the kingdom to the Lord. The process of the kingdom being turned to the Lord and taken out of the hands of man is going on now. The process of teaching people how to let go of the old self-life and how to die as Jesus died to God on the flesh plane and went through the veil into the ark round so people are loving not their lives under death and they're going through the veil out of the candlestick realm and the tabernacle realm hallelujah and then the way into the holiest of all is not open as long as the first tabernacle or the candlestick tabernacle or the other tabernacle is standing and you're drawing from that we have an altar that they have no right to eat to serve the tabernacle to serve the flesh. We have an altar that those that serve the tabernacle, they can get the blessings of God to help them on that place, but they can't get the food because we have an altar that they that serve the flesh have no right to partake of at all. They have to be willing to leave the flesh now in order to partake of this flesh, this food that will deliver them from the flesh. There has to be a wilderness and obedience and a bowing before God. Oh, God, help us this morning because you're certainly laying it on us. Help us, oh, God, make it plain that we might understand. We rejoice in thy salvation in the name of the Lord our God. We set up our banners. The Lord, as you pray on this plain, fulfill all of thy petitions. Now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. There's one thing to be anointed. People follow people because they're anointed. They're not saved. Their bodies are dying every day. As long as you get tired or weary, that's death working in your body. Hallelujah. Seek the Lord because the Lord is everlasting strength. The young men, they lay at bowl, they lay like bowls and nets at the head of the streets, ministering to the people, but they they haven't got out of the net of corruption. Hallelujah. There's those that are going to break that net as sure as we're here coming to the freedom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from, the, from his holy heaven, not the heavenly places we've sat down in, but the heavenly place that he ascended high above all heavens and all authority and all power. I don't want him to hear me from the heavens I'm in. I don't care for the blessing anymore. I want him to hear me from the heavens that's above and take me out of the heavens I'm in. The anointed heavens, the heavenly places that we sat down in and come into the heavens where it's no more anointed, but I live his life completely. He don't anoint me, but I live nothing but him. There's a vast difference between anointing him me and blessing me and having an anointed ministry and me living by nothing but him. There's a vast difference between those two realms. He's saving his anointed from the anointed realm and bringing them into the realm where nothing but him lives in him. I'm preaching the everlasting gospel that can't be preached as long as we're marked in our minds with the beastly or the natural rays of doing things. Save by the saving strength of thy right hand. Some trust in chariots. Of course, I got some scriptures I could follow out in Isaiah. About one to them to go down to Egypt for help and trust in men and trust in horses their horses are flesh and not spirit the Egyptians are man we're not trusting in man in any way shape we're through with even anointed man we don't want anything to do with flesh even anointed flesh we're not asking for our flesh to be anointed anymore we're asking for our flesh to die that you become the life of our flesh not just get a quickening but there's a vast difference between a touch of God on our flesh there's meetings all over the land where people can get a touch of God on the flesh. But where Christ takes his nature, his life takes the place. There's two lives there. One has to go in order for him. The flesh, the, the thing that keeps the body alive has to go in order for Christ to become the life of the body. You can't take the old in. You can't even know him after the fleshly consciousness. You have to go through the veil. Every piece of furniture 
into the one ark realm. That piece of furniture has no ministry to it whatsoever. You don't put any oil in the candle. You don't put any water. You don't you don't bake any shoe bread. You don't burn any incense. It's just one place there. It just sits there in darkness now, because it's sitting down here in the darkness of our human nature. But one of these days, that holy of holies is going to be lit with the Shekinah glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, it is. Won't have to trim any lamps. Won't have to pour any oil in them. But these are they that empty the golden oil out of themselves. Yes, help me, Lord. I won't get past the first sin. I've got, hi God, I've got scriptures turned down to prove this thing. Turn on through to, to the latter part of Revelation. Taking the subject up and carrying it on out. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name. Oh, God, help me to remember your nature. Help me to turn away. Help me, Lord, the times that I've gone through, and even so recently, that I trusted in my own nature, tried to push people, tried to force them in any way. Help me quit, stop doing that, and get up on the mountain where I can lend a hand in hand down from above. It's it's been a partaker that if they really want to help, that the God life in me can lift them up into God Himself. It's a new ministry, complete new order, complete new day. There's no darkness in it, there's no night in it. Nothing but Him. Hallelujah. We go behold in this third day as we're beginning to touch it. And we're going forth in it, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord who's coming forth as prepared as the morning. God's never come forth prepared as the morning. He's come forth working in the darkness. Only in Jesus Christ. He was the only one. The only one that had the same kind of body that nothing but the light of God. God manifests in the flesh. Hallelujah. They are brought down. They are fallen. Trust in chariots or trust in any human element. Trust in any human strength. Trust in that which God did in the six days when we hadn't finished our work because six days or six thousand years, man's given to finish, come to the end of all of his works. Then the seventh day is a rest, a millennial rest. It remaineth a Sabbath rest for the people of God. And he that entered into his rest has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Hallelujah. Then shall you know him who is coming forth as prepared as the morning into the city that there's no night there. The gates are open night and day, but you can't carry the night of your human nature in it. The gates are open to those who leave the human nature and come into the city of God, but there's no night over there. The gates are open. Hallelujah. Right open for us to come out of the darkness into the city where there's no night there. But as we go through the gates of the city, come under the ministry that's ministering that's of the gates. It absolutely open up the way, have a ministry that'll open up the way for God's people to come in. They're the gates of the city. And as you go through those gates, that ministry takes all darkness out of you and you go into the city where there's no night there. And talk about us having little peace, little touches of peace and little touches foretaste. We haven't had the life to come. We've only had foretastes of the life to come. And read it, I think, in about the 6th or 7th chapter of Hebrews. Having tasted the powers of the life to come. What's that taste given to me for? That I might let that life grow? I might let that life develop until I don't bring forth thorns anymore. Because that which brings forth thorns is rejected under cursing, nigh under burning. That which gets the foretaste of the life to come and then uses it to build the old and brings forth thorns because they've had a taste of the form the light to come. That don't mean that they're qualified to come into this high plane I'm talking about because they've had four tastes of the light to come. That don't qualify them a taste. The thing that qualifies us is all we got is a taste. While we were still in the old life, 
God gave us a taste of the new. Then we think we're going to make the new work on the old because God gave it to us on the old. That was just a taste. Now we're willing to come out of the old and quickly into the new. So we won't just taste of the new, but we'll live by nothing but the new. This is the coming gospel to be preached all over the land. This is the only order that will turn people away from themselves. This is the only word that gets down in the brass patch where we live and doesn't cover the flesh in any way or make provision for it, but teaches how people how to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust and the desire. It's a new order. It's a new day. The dawning of it is already seeping into our consciousness. And we let it work. We feel it taking us to the might of it and the power of it, generating as we yield to it, and feel the generation of it, and the generating of it in our being. We're beginning to feel that we're actually beginning to touch the princely kingdom of the new order. And going to be privileged to be channels and avenues for it to flow through. And we have no fellowship or nothing to offer to anybody but the pure fellowship of the life of God. Because we're willing to say everything that God has blessed, everything that God has used. Everything he's created and given avenues that can bring forth from and use them. They can't bring forth the new. They only bring forth that which is in the old. Impossible. Hallelujah. From to use the old to bring the new. I don't know what God will do when he gets these bodies cleaned up and gets those completely over. What will be brought forth? Hallelujah. But that will be brought forth will never be under the curse in any way, shape, or form. That will be brought forth will be sold in nothing but the life of God. And be brought forth by nothing but the life of God. And Satan can't touch it in any way, shape, or form. Because if it's brought forth in the realm, he can't ascend to this realm. This realm is so far up, he can't ascend, he can't get into it, he can't tempt. He has no control of it. Come, it left. That's the order that God is calling us to. That's the priesthood. And are you willing to forsake everything I ever gave you? Cast every crown at my feet. Hallelujah. Even willing to leave the anointing that's been for the flesh. Because when there's no flesh, there's no anointing. When flesh is dead, God just flows through the dead flesh. He don't anoint the flesh. Hallelujah. It's there, but it's dead. It's just an avenue for one life, one message. That's when the pure language is going to be preached. That people with one consent, there's one standard being held up. Not the standard of all the different realms of salvation that God is blessing and setting the, and setting the death within families. He sets the death within families on different realms and different ranks and blesses them on those ranks. And they bring forth on the rank they're on. That's not the final. The final is one pure language that men with one consent might seek unto the Lord. Hallelujah. To be one gospel to consent to. When that which is perfect is come, all this partial is going to be done away with. After this perfect is done, God won't bless the partial anymore. He won't anoint him anymore. There'll be no anointing. It'll just be a river of life, clear as crystal, one river, one life, flowing clear as crystal. That's the call now, because the thousand years is so near. It's already beginning to break. And because it's beginning to break, there has to be ministers that give themselves to God that he might break through them. Hallelujah. And the Son of Righteousness began to rise with healing in his wings and to go forth as calves in a stall. You know, the Son is being taught how to yield to the Lord. Where the Son of Righteousness rises with healing in his wings, we draw out of the old into the new, broken him in all things who is the head. So we all come to the full-grown statue of the full-grown man in Jesus Christ, no more tossed about by every wind of doctrine, coming to some men whereby they lay in light to destroy, but grow in him in all things, so is the head. And that's the new body that's going to rule everything with a rod of iron. Oh, shall we stand? Oh, Hallie, I don't know how you feel, but I feel this word has sobered me. 
I want to tell you I'm not preaching this word to you alone. I'm preaching this word to myself. Much like you hear this word, you can't preach this word and play with it. Westlake, you can go back if you want to. When you go back, you'll be dead in the month. Your only hope is to go on. Your hope isn't back there. Your hope is ahead. There's nothing where we are. There's nothing for us where we are. Only a blessing on a dead plane. You want death to be blessed? All right. I don't want death to be blessed. I want death to be overcome. Taken away completely. Hallelujah. Bow our heads before you, Lord. Not only our heads, we bow our lives before you. We bow our hearts before you. We pick this old rebellious man, and we bow him before you, Lord. We turn him over to you and give you permission to annihilate this Adamic nature that cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We're looking for you to come, Lord. And as you're coming, Lord, coming forth, we want to be yours at your coming. Because you're only delivering that which belongs to you now. You're only delivering fully that which has given itself to you. You're only working for full emancipation to those that are turning to you for complete freedom, to be emancipated completely. We give ourselves to you the best of our ability, and Holy Spirit of the living God, teach us how to give Jesus his rightful place and teach us how to say, because we have to say it, we have to give you that right. You'll never force yourself. You'll never, you'll never put yourself on us in the way of force. But the Holy Ghost can teach us how to say that Jesus is Lord or how to turn to you and give you the Lordship such as the church has not known anything about and the sons up to the present time have known very little about. Help us, Lord. Holy Spirit of the living God, do your final work. We've had the gifts. We've had the anointings of the Holy Spirit. There yet remains a work to be done. The Holy Spirit is groaning with groans that can be uttered, longing to bring us into the place to where the body can be redeemed. Help us, O oh God, to yield to the groanings of the Spirit. Help ourselves to give ourselves and be united with what the Spirit wants to do, the final work that He wants to do, the liberators, and bring us into the adoption of the redemption of our bodies, and we'll give you the glory, and we'll give you the praise. And Holy Ghost, no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost, teach us how to give you your rightful place, teach us how to turn ourselves over to you, Lord, teach us how... Not to vindicate ourselves, not to make place for ourselves, but help us to turn away from ourselves and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't put on the body you was in, but we can put on the nature that was in that body and make no provision of the flesh. We'll give you the glory, we'll give you the praise. Bring us face to face with the scriptures that we've read and gloried over and thought were worked out in our beings. Give us an understanding and bring us face to face with every scripture that we don't understand. It's meaning. Bring us face to face that we have to come to its meaning to where we'd be willing to turn to you and meet you on your terms because you met us on our terms as far as you could. Now you can't take us any further only as we meet you on your terms. Teach us how to do it, O oh God, and we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. May God bless you. Help us all, Lord. Put us together, Lord. Give us unity where we're seeking with one accord. Hallelujah. Until the full break comes, and we'll give him all the glory and all the praise. His wonderful name. Amen. Amen.